story about the, oh, shit. Yeah. the, oh, yeah. the yeah. 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 we got distracted once. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got yeah. sex with an energetical man. Yes. 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 Yeah. Oh my God. Yes. It's yeah. so fun. It's so expansive. And then, so the other day, I was we were driving home from a sunset walk. Yeah, Gina and I. I was on the back of her uh, motorbike, and you're telling me about this amazing podcast. And I had been like questioning myself because yeah, when I go over the edge and climax, I feel so tired mm -hmm. and I want to sleep. Mm -hmm. And, but I also feel myself like pulling for that, like wanting to get there, like, you know, reaching for the goal of climax. And so Gina told me about this amazing podcast, junk food sex versus gourmet. And it really clicked into my mind of, of like, oh, I don't want to go over the edge. I actually want to choose to same as the way he does, just mm -hmm. like ride the waves of orgasm and like expand what I can feel and expand mm. the experience longer. And, and it, I don't know if I've heard it before, but it clicked into place in a new way. So it's such a, it's such a more orgasmic, fun, pleasurable experience when we're both in the space of like no goal. And then sometimes I do go over the edge. And that's actually more pleasurable than it was before because I'm not trying to. Mm. I was like, oh, oops, I accidentally did. And that's fun too, you know? And, and, because, yeah. and because it's less of a gift, it's not a given anymore. Right. And it's not um, as, as uh, consistent. So then right. when you do it, it's like, ooh, this is extra special. Like, right. yeah, the next yeah. level. And it totally. Helps. Yeah. It builds up as well. So mm. once you choose to that orgasm, like at the first time that you're like reaching to that peak, or like slowing down and like feeling or riding that, and then you go there again, and then you go there again. That's how you build your orgasmic potential. And then when you do, like, then it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I feel more in my body, like further and further. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And then and then also just taking away like that marker of success or something. Like mm -hmm. if I come, it's a good experience. If he comes, it's a good experience. Like that was so what I was conditioned mm -hmm. when I was growing up, and that's so stressful. Oh to be like, God. oh my God, I have to make him come. Like, oh my God, I have to come. And then he's disappointed if I don't come. And then I'm disappointed if I don't make him come. Right. Just take all that away. It's like, oh, what a relief, you know? I, I, was, just, I was just happy if I could come. Yeah. Like, it was hard for me to come. Uh, yeah. 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 I was like, like come on. Here. Yeah. Well, I wanted to add to me about that, about pleasure in bed. Because that's why you looked in bed. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. That was my bed. I'm like, wow. I'm it sure it was hard for you to come. Yeah. Um, that that it has I used to have a ton of performance anxiety when it came to pleasuring men like I literally went through phases of like not even able to being able to like touch a cock because I was so afraid of like I'm gonna do it wrong and like I'm gonna I'm not gonna be good at it and he's gonna hate me or he's gonna think I'm bad and I was so frozen with it and um it's helped me massively to take the goal out and to just touch men for my own pleasure and so when I touch a man's cock, when I suck a man's cock, when I do anything with his body, it's all for my pleasure. So if I want to lick him, I will. If I want to suck on his cock, I will. If I want to caress him, I will. But it's only for my pleasure. And if it's not for my pleasure, I don't do it. Because then when I do, he's like, wow, this is amazing. And he can feel that it's my hunger and for my pleasure and my desire versus like commerce, like, oh, I need to give back to you or I feel like I have to obligation sex and head is not pleasurable compared to I'm hungry to pleasure you because it feels good for me head that's really good so it, it, when it's for your own pleasure it's so much better <laughs> hashtag head we um, have some horrible terms that we use yeah so well, sorry, wait, like he wants the one that we like to eat. Oh, um, oh um, I like to say the phrase eating out, but they're like, oh, he, he, he ate me out. Yeah. We're like, we're like, that feels like a middle school term or high school term. <laughs> we like teenage terms. Yeah. So <laughs> we say going down on you, oral sex, yeah, suck awesome. your pussy, lick yeah. your pussy, lick your pussy, yeah. 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 licking yeah. pussy. Yeah. Yeah. There's all sorts of terms. So what's it like to have sex with a man who doesn't, <laughs> who doesn't come, <gasps> yeah. but has, is more to orgasmic? Um, I know, but I just want to, I just want to easily just to Well, it's, it's, um, I don't know, it's expansive, it's fun, it's really intimate, um, it feels like interdimensional sometimes, like it feels spiritual, it's really fun too because our sex is like, I've never had a partner like this where we can play in all the different spaces, like we can be so loving and sensual and energetic but then also it can like a, 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 a switch can flip and it's like kinky and he's like spanking me and choking me and like 
talking mm-hmm. dirty. Yeah, and I just I love that. Yes, exactly. He said. <laughs> Yeah, that's the journey. Yeah. Okay, well, mm, what does he say? Don't be shy now. <laughs> <laughs> I, you. I love to call him daddy. So that's so that's a fun one. Um, I love when he calls me a little slut. I like when he calls me a good girl or a bad girl. Uh-huh. <laughs> it depends on the moment. Like, am I a good girl? Am I a bad girl? I think good girls more like sensual, energetic, loving, and then when I'm a bad girl, like it's kinky and you get to be spanked me and I'm punished. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah Caroline's like, like, yeah. She's like, yeah. I love that. Love yeah. a good daddy fantasy. So we should we talk about last weekend? Yeah. So um, mm-hmm. we were in the tub. We were in the not big tub, aka pool. Um, <laughs> all of us, and uh, we were on a weekend away for Tim and Kelly's birthday. You, you may call. have seen the odd photograph. If you if you follow right. any of us on Instagram, which I'm sure you follow Gina and probably some of you Kim, then you probably saw it, whether you liked it or not. Um, we bombarded social media with some photos of our trip. But anyway, we were on. We were in the pool, and as orgasm does come up always uh it came up and I was I was saying that I love um like a pool jet jacuzzi jet um shower head orgasm uh you know snap your fingers and 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 like that yes and so that and I were like wait and then (laughs) yeah you orgasm off the pool jet and I was like, you don't? <laughs> I, I never had. Neither of us ever had. No. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I've, I've wound around those parts, but right. I never <laughs> all guys. Oh, oh, yeah. and, and our other friend, Julia, was who was there with us, who really could be here because she's lived with us also. But mm. um, but she was like, oh, yeah, absolutely. And, like, some of us are like, yeah, we love the pool jet. We love the, you know, it was like kind of half and half. It's like, been, it, like or we're very well acquainted with the pool jet orgasm. <laughs> and then the other half is like, oh, no, not, I haven't had an orgasm from that. And I was like, well, do you, Gina, do you want to give it a try? And she was like, yeah, let me, let me feel it out. And I was injured. I had just gotten in a motorbike accident. So I was half in the pool, half out of the pool, sitting on, sitting on this little, um, this little step inside the pool. So sitting there and the jets down below me. So I couldn't get in and paddle. But um, I was like, Gina, come, come check it out. And so she came over and she's like, yeah, this is good. Yeah, this is really good. Yeah, I can see. I can have an orgasm doing this. I'm like, great. You should go for it. So then I then we called over the whole group, and I was like, you guys, you just need to have an orgasm. We need to do this in sisterhood. And so we all we, we all came together, and then we literally all hugged Gina. They sandwiched me. We sandwiched her, and while she had an amazing energy, first energetic, energetic, super, and we were obviously wow. having energetic orgasms with her, like just feeling the energy through yeah. us. And then she had this like uh, amazing, amazing. Dude. Yeah, okay. It was an edge. It was a little edgy. It was a little edgy. But she leaned in, and so did the other our other friend who was with us, who who was like, this was all new for, but she loved it. Um, and then Gina had an amazing orgasm. We all got to be part of it, and then it began a ripple effect. Then it became so, a conveyor belt. Exactly. And then we're like, who's next? Was it you? Julia. Or Julia. Yeah, Julia. Yeah. Julia yeah, first. Yeah. So then Julia yeah. went and then she had a beautiful experience and we all hugged her yeah. and we did a sandwich and we were all moaning together. Like even though we weren't having the orgasm, I mean we were because we felt it through her, but she was the one having the climax and we were all moaning with her and cheering her on and like thrilled for her. And then we just like went through the entire group and it was, some some wanted to be hugged, some did not want to be hugged, but everybody had their own experience in the pool. I unfortunately didn't get to have a climax in the pool because I couldn't be submerged in the water but I got to be living vicariously through everyone else and feel their orgasms through me and my body so it was so fun but I wanted to say about that is what it all felt normal to us even for the few of us that like have less experience of this and that it was a bit edgy it was never like oh my god what the fuck it was always like wow this feels edgy but like I appreciate this and the reason I bring that up is because this is the power of being surrounded by people who normalize sexuality and pleasure because look, we're all talking about this, like, yeah, of course you have orgasms in the pool with all of your friends next to you, right? And like in the real, in the rest of the world, you're like, what? No, I, I don't even want somebody to know that I'm having orgasms, right? Or let alone let, have them hear me or see me, right? So I just wanted to emphasize, like, this is the importance of having friends who are sex positive, doing the inner work, 
have strong self-love inside of themselves because then these things can be normal and fun and we gotta normalize pleasure. Mm. How, does it, how does it feel for me? I mean, I was watching all of you guys thinking, oh, do you know what? Good for you. And I was just <laughs> off on my own having my own little introvert. <laughs> But she had an introverted orgasm. Yeah. And that was great. Yeah. So it's, yeah. we can go to play where we're at. Yeah. 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 Oh, and, that feels, yeah. and that was yeah. great. And, and there was never pressure. Like, well, you have to do anything. You're just like, yeah, I had a great experience. Yeah. And so one thing I want to say on this, from like getting a yoni massage off a woman, which I'd never, I'd never had any sexual thing with a woman. That I was like, wait, a woman's basically fingering me okay but it doesn't feel weird it feels very normal i'm just like yeah this feels right and then going to like temple parties which i've told some of you about which is essentially um like a posh orgy a really safe conscious orgy a safe conscious orgy yeah um, but you don't have to be involved. You can be involved. It's like freestyle, and yeah. you can meet people there. You can act out desires, whatever. And like, it all feels very normal when you're with people. Yeah. You are all confident in that, and some aren't confident in it. But it feels very natural to share pleasure with different people. Not not like not necessarily like going around shagging everyone. Um, but you can quit that. You, you can, can do that. You can do whatever you want. But like, I like to go and just play and not have sex with anyone. Yeah. And just play with the sexual energy and be flirty and fun. And you can watch people doing all the things around you. And it just feels really normal. Which a few years ago, that wouldn't have felt normal to me. Um, and then this in the pool. Very normal. Yeah. I was like, yeah. Now we're like, that's going to just be tradition. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so that le- it was Kelly. It was Kim and Kelly's yeah. birthday. Yeah, and we have a photo of you actually having one. We can post it. Oh yeah, we, it was actually it on. Yeah. Yeah. You we actually posted it. posted it on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, it was on Instagram. <laughs> and, I love yeah. that. and I posted one. <laughs> and I, I posted one on Instagram story of one of our friends <laughs> having hers. Yeah. Not like in the moment of climax, but when she was on on the jet. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did. You will so sound like only the people who know will see it like one leg. Yeah, yeah if like you know leg. what's happening, you're like, oh, oh she is, well, she's the one positioned in front of the jet. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So then we went on to, mm. after the foreplay in the pool, came, we decided to have a self pleasure circle. We grabbed our glass wands, our candles, our crystals, our yoni eggs, butt plugs, butt plugs yes, don't we forget that, that. Um, essential oils, and, and yeah, decided to have a full-blown self-pleasure circle. We've been talking about doing this for a while at our house, but it yeah. just hasn't, it hasn't manifested yet. It hasn't been the right time, but this was the right time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so what that looks like, just in case you're like, what on earth is that? Yeah. So we're all lying on the floor with our heads together. So we're all on our backs with our heads together in the middle. Well, not like touching. Not heads are normal. No, they are. Like, they can be. Like, they could be, yeah, but in that direction. We're all yeah, in that yeah, direction. Yeah. yeah, well, actually, no, we start, sat up in a circle. Yeah, we sat in a circle. Johnny, first of all, led, yeah. led us through something similar to what we just did, a bit longer, different things. Touching ourselves and really getting into the space. Into the breath. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Which is obviously very important. Your body. And then I led like a breast massage, yeah. mm-hmm. which I've never done. I've never led a breast. In fact, I have led a breast. You did massage amazing. Before. I just whipped it out the back because I've, I've seen other people do it, and I was like, I know, I get this. So led a breast massage. Do you breast massage expert? Literally string to my bow. <laughs> led a breast massage impromptu, you know. And we did some screaming and whatever mm-hmm. else we did. Yeah. And then I led some, and then I guided everyone into some pussy stroking. So we. Then we de- we I, I instructed everyone to lie down and then to start stroking and I guided through some upstrokes and some downstrokes because downstrokes are really important and they're often missed and so we did a bunch of upstroking and downstroking and then some freestyling where we nobody was really guiding mm-hmm. um, and you you get did, guided some parts and mm-hmm. maybe Julia did so we all took turns because mo- the majority of the group is sex coaches in some level um, and so or yeah in the future yeah or in the mm-hmm. future sex coaches yeah. and, <laughs> <laughs> she's getting there um and so we all contributed and it was really natural we just flowed into what felt right and then and then I was like are we all wanting to climax? Are we wanting to orgasm together, ladies? And the whole group was like, 
yeah, let's do it. I, I could get there in a few minutes. So I was like, great, let's just keep building that sexual energy. And then we did. We um, climaxed once all together. So we did the edging before. So yeah. Like, okay, we're going edging. Yeah, we and came up and yeah. down. We came, brought the energy up and brought it down to keep building, like Yanni said. So that everyone was ready at the same time. Yeah. And we set, did our sex magic, a.k.a. what are we manifesting in this moment? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, with our orgasms. With your orgasm. So yeah. that's a top pro tip. If you haven't set your intention with your orgasm, that's the manifestation portal. It's called sex magic. Yes. Mm-hmm. And it's really powerful to shout out your intention. Um, you can say it in your mind, but to shout it out is really powerful when you climax. Um, shooting that energy. Look out at them all right in the dumb. So cute. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, okay, got it. Shout right. this shit. Shout down. desire at climax. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the energy is that powerful. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. You sit into the universe and then see it manifest. Yes. Yeah. It's amazing. That's what it's for us. So we had a lot of powerful, and then we had two climaxes. I, mean, I missed the climax memo, and everyone was screaming. I was like, wait, are you orgasming? Yeah, I was like, like wait. Oh. And then she's like, okay, well, I want to go. I was like, great, I'll go again. Let's do it. And then a bunch of us went again yeah. and had an amazing couple of orgasms mm-hmm. together. That was really beautiful. Yeah. And, you know, I just want to say that I was reflecting because it all felt really natural and normal to me, but I just want to acknowledge that a few years ago, I would have felt so weird, like so uncomfortable hearing my friends moan, knowing my friends were this call, knowing, yeah, coming to this call, (laughs) knowing that my friends were orgasming, like just all of that would have felt so weird to me a few years ago before I dove into this work and started studying it and researching it and immersing myself in it and healing my own shame. So if any of this feels weird or like absolutely never in a million years, it's so normal, you'll be there in a few years. What is the sacred squirter? Who has used it here, Kim? So we Kim have we have two yeah. sacred squirters between us, but everyone has tried it. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, yeah, I haven't tried it yet, but... Yeah, and I'm really close. Squirting, squirting is a real thing, and you should definitely try it. And I used to think, I, well, I can't do that, and I definitely can. So you should definitely try it. Wait, I feel like I need to just share that one of our best friends has been using Gina's sacred squirter. I think it's for years. For one yeah, hour. I lent my sacred squirter to my friend Julia. Yeah, and so Julia's was using did. it, and I know she would be okay with us sharing this because she's so proud of herself because she recently squirted. And I just want to acknowledge that. What did she time? do? What did she do when she squirted? She sent us a video of it. <laughs> <laughs> she sent us a video of it ever going all like, I did floor. it! In the, the in the wetness, like so on the floor, wet floor. All of the floor. Touching the puddle. She's like, look at it. I thought it might be pee, but it's definitely not. I tasted it. <laughs> I like, love that. Okay, confirmation. <laughs> So if you've not got a sacred squirter, you should definitely get one. I highly recommend it. And there's a video on how to use it. Definitely watch it before. It's all in the mind. I read about cervical orgasms. Have you any top tips for a single person to have one, please? Oh, my God, Irene. Absolutely. Great question. Who wants to talk about that one, Yanni? Yeah. I feel like that's definitely Yanni's question. What a beautiful question. Yeah, I love that. Okay, the cervix, that's called the holy grail of our bodies, of our feminine bodies, because it opens mm-hmm. so much to like this beautiful gateway of like orgasmic bliss and like into the universe. How? Like, first of all, like really dropping in and like, um, yeah, like really relaxing and, and, and getting acquainted with your cervix as well. So really connecting with your cervix. I advise that like, to actually have like a whole travel inside of your body, like your whole yogi, like your left wall, the entrance and the right wall. And then you go further in and where should serve? It's like a, a little circle. You go around that. And it's like a little donut. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like a circle. It's, it's like, like the end travel. of your nose with a dimple on it. Yeah. Like yeah. you travel around that. You can do that like visualization going in. And also when you're like self-pleasuring and touching yourself inside, you're touching. And it can be like very sensitive in the beginning because if it's never been touched or like only touched when like a big cock came in and felt like, oh, okay, you know this feeling, like I'm probably, you know this feeling, then. So you so. So then like it's all. <laughs> and that can be really, that can really create trauma inside of your vagina. Exactly. So there can be trauma there. Yeah. So then the whole thing is like to like, to like really like reacquaint with that part and like like going slow and like when your body is ready and like super turned on and ready like also like where you're doing that in self-pleasure and with sex as well 
then it's like open and when it opens up it's like you know it's like yeah also it can be completely numb like when you touch it I genuinely thought I had cancer the first time I touched it I was like fuck what is this (laughs) I was like oh my god I need to go and get an ultrasound immediately that's what I thought because I didn't even know what the fucking cervix was Mm, really I didn't know it could orgasm I didn't have any clue and then when Mm. I got more into this work and I was like, okay, touch the cervix. I was like, I'm touching it, but I can't feel anything. Like it was completely mm-hmm. numb. And I think that is because it got bashed a couple of times back in, back in the day. Yeah. And um, yeah, so for me, it's been this journey of like, like touching it, like you touch the end of your nose and then just bringing all of my awareness to, to a gentle touch and just that was it like that's it for ages just like trying to feel something and then when I did start to feel something um I did I remember I did the self-pleasure thing like video that I was part of a course I've told some of you about it I did that and the day when it was all about the cervix it was just it's so emotional like I was literally crying and bawling my eyes out about all this old shit and that's the power of the cervix. Like it's it's ve- it's very emotional. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. One yeah. thing I wanted to add is just um, using a glass wand mm-hmm. or a crystal mm-hmm. wand, um, and that's that's what's made the biggest difference for me around my cervix is using a glass wand slowly and and like Yanni said, like really taking time to get to know the feeling inside of your vagina and on your vaginal walls, and then mm-hmm. get to your cervix. Um, but I've done de-armoring inside of my vagina, which is essentially like using your fingers or a glass wand or crystal wand and putting pressure essentially on different parts of the inside of your vagina and like releasing tension. So um, like in a circular motion, like a clock. So I've done that inside of the walls of the, the wall of my vagina and gotten up to my cervix. And then I just put some light pressure on it and just feel like, is there pain? Is there pleasure? Is there tension? And putting that light pressure on it with my fingers or a wand helps to release it, helps to sensitize it. So using my glass wand, going at a pace that feels good for me inside, like releasing tension with the wand, um, visualizing, like Yanni said, these are different ways that you can just have contact with your cervix, get to know it, let it know that it, that you're seeing it and giving it attention and sensitize it. Yeah. Mm. And and on that, like when I was doing it with the wand, I couldn't feel anything. So I had to do it with my finger because mm. the wand, I was just like, <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, ah, I need to use the finger. Uh, okay. mm. And by the way, the cervix moves up and down depending on your cycle. And so if you lie on your back with your knees in the air, you can generally touch it. Mm. Just in case you're wondering where. I love how yeah. Gina thinks she's not a sex coach. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay, Gina's Gina. an undercover sex coach. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm an she's like, I swear I'm a self love coach. I'm like, and the sex same, coach. Same, same. Yeah. Yeah. I always yeah. say I live with all sex coaches. Me I'm too. Like, yeah. You're yeah. a sex coach. Yeah. 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 Undercover. Undercover. Yeah. yeah. For now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what were you going to say about cervicals? Oh, I was going to. Oh, uh, yeah, I was going to say my cervix. Um, I feel a lot of pain in my cervix throughout mm-hmm. my life. Felt a lot of pain. Like from getting an IUD, um, I think from like having an abortion, I think from like having rough sex where I've hit it because I thought mm-hmm. I was supposed to, like I was supposed yeah. to take it or I was supposed to whatever. Mm-hmm. So wow. for me, it's really been a journey of, yeah, like de-armoring and, and going, rich. yeah, right? Like I thought, that's what I was saying to myself. I don't think anyone else is saying it to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but for me, yeah, it's been like definitely in my self-pleasure when it, it feels like I can go there. Like after I'm really turned on, then I'll yeah. put a glass wand in and gently touch it as much as I can and like mm-hmm. releasing that for me it's it's just really important to go like gently and however mm-hmm. much I can take and a lot of emotion comes up yeah yeah, it's like oh, yeah. so much in there She's yeah. yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah and just to know like until a few years ago I thought a clitoral orgasm was pretty much it which well, is, there was yeah like I mean, which that. it's it it's now no surprise to me that I, I used to think that I was like do I have a low libido Mm-hmm. Um, but I was like, no, I just wasn't really doing sex properly. Like I was doing like one percent of sex, yeah, and it wasn't that great. And then I'd want to fall asleep, and it's like a quick hit. It was like a dopamine hit. Mm, it's like a sneeze. It was, it was <laughs> one of those little, yeah. those little clitoral orgasms. are just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was, it was like having a cheeseburger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, totally. 
junk food. Who are, what are their questions? <laughs> okay, we, we digress to yeah. junk food. Uh, cervical orgasms. Irene, I hope that helps. Um, any tips on dealing with a sexless marriage? I'm really open. I've done the work, cleared the shame, etc. but he's still in that shame. Awkwardness, and I don't trust him to tell him my desires in case I'm judged of or shamed. That's an Amy. <laughs> Maybe. I'm not looking at Amy. I literally. What was it, Vincent? Maybe a duet. Oh, Maybe a duet. Oh, I would love to do that. Do you, you want to you take the stage first? Um, I think I can start around you feel around telling him about your desire, and mm -hmm. I will say, and obviously this comes from my experience, men love hearing women desire. I think that's encourage us more rather than not to know it, because it feels like she's communicating her desire, you committing your desire to me, it kind of gave me a clue where to start and what to do rather than to be like, I don't even know what to start and maybe I'm going to do it wrong. So what I would say is you should think that he wants to hear your desire rather than being scared that he's going to judge you, not going to answer. But that's just one side. What was, what no, I, lo I love that. Yeah, I mean, my, my company is called Desire on Fire. I focus all on desire and our desires are really like our most powerful Desire is the most powerful force in the world, I think. Um, and so if you're not expressing your desire, you can't blame him for the, the issue. Um, and, and, I, and I totally get the fear completely. And um, what I found is when I practice owning my desire and expressing it, uh, men respond accordingly. Truly. And you got to look at, I mean, it's like, it's like the story that Kim told. She was like, oh, I want to have a yoni massage, but she wasn't what I call right with it. So she was kind of like, she was kind of shaming it. She was kind of awkward with it. She was kind of doubting it. And so she comes to him and she's like, oh, I want a yoni massage. It's kind of this weird thing that Gina said I should try. And he's like, what the fuck? You know, and, and so he <laughs> met her with the same level of doubt and shame and fear and judgment that she had inside. So I don't know who asked this question, and I'm not saying this from, from a place of judgment, but if you think you've done all the work and you can't express your desire, you haven't. Because you have got oh. to be, yeah, I, I'm, all right. I'm like, this is, this is what I say to my clients. You're not my client, but I'm going to say it. Like, like, this is really up to you to build your self-love muscle and your courage to, to see your desire as the most important thing in your life, as your compass. And if you're not honoring your desire, like that, that's a big red flag for the relationship, for any of your relationships. It's not just your romantic relationship, right? So that desire needs to be, needs to be present in all relationships in your life. So I would say absolutely like practice getting clear on what you desire. Maybe write a list of your desires. In my work, we do something called desire pulling. So you chat with a friend and ask her to just pull desires out of you and ask you over and over again what you want. Get clear on what you want. And then share it with him and be willing to share it over and over again. And if he is a hell no to all of these desires, you have to be clear if this is important to you or not. Because if it is a priority and you've asked lovingly and clearly and he's a hell no, well, that's quite telling. And you got to decide if you want to be in this relationship. And if you've come to him and you've expressed it fully and you've been loving and clear playful. and courageous and playful and not demanding, but really vulnerable. I would bet that he will surprise you and that he will respond and be like, okay, I want to try that or I want to figure it out or this is that important to you, let's work it out or yeah, I will go see a sex coach with you or I would be willing to explore this further. We have a few. We have some options. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. I want to say something here and mm -hmm. you know, I think I just want to bring some authenticity and really show you guys or how living with those women inspired me. What you said really resonated to me because naming my desire has kind of been one of my challenge. And the exercise, just writing it down and communicating to your partner, I think that's a good exercise that I would want to do with you. Because at least you know what is my least desire, but it doesn't feel as confronting if I just say, this is my desire. And we but, have done that before. Yeah. So those kind of exercise and really, you know, really embracing that some people are expert in sex and embracing and listening to them. That's the kind of knowledge I'm getting and mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, there's a solution to that. So what you can take out from this call is maybe if you've got a partner or husband, those are some of the challenges they might be feeling and struggling with. So you could help them as well. So take the knowledge of this call and take it within your relationship. Maybe just share this recording with them.
It is a condition when you get, oh yeah, yeah, when you get cramps in your vagina at different occasions to sex. I actually have another amazing podcast. I, I interviewed this incredible woman. She's um, a sex coach, a female libido specialist. Her name, her name on Instagram is the Yoni Empire. Definitely go follow her. I suggest yeah. that. And she makes the what the sacred Yeah, uh, no, she uh, she does Ona lifestyle. Uh, amazing, okay. like glass wands and uh, and crystal wands. And she had vag- vaginismus, and it really like shot her into her journey of healing shame around her sexuality and Mm -hmm. what we really talked about is how our pussies are so wise so like what is your pussy trying to tell you Mm -hmm. with with the vaginismus like Mm -hmm. you know are you not listening to her are you having sex that hurts yeah it's it's really diving into that for yourself and and that can be such a long journey but definitely check out that podcast yeah yeah and also i've spoke about this before but i used to get utis really bad every time i had Mm. sex i would get a freaking uti and it was just hell and now when i look back like there was so much i wasn't listening i i was going to the doctors you know i was so desperate i was getting antibiotics and i knew not to get antibiotics because i'm not like a pill popper i was getting these utis and actually doing this work and like your vagina or your pussy is definitely speaking to you yeah. so if you're getting thrush if you're getting utis if you're getting these things like painful sex it's all telling you something and the journey on your own is really like how i recovered and i really yeah. think like rather than probably having sex with someone else first of all start slowly building up with yourself and also ask yourself do you actually want to have sex with this person mm-hmm. anymore Yeah, I have a story with this that's brief, but when my, uh, an ex of mine and I were, um, we had like a breach in the, in the, the container of our relationship and our agreements for the relationship. And I closed my heart and didn't feel like I could trust him anymore. And there was just some disconnection and we just weren't feeling very good emotionally and spiritually in our our dynamic. And I stopped getting wet. Mm -hmm. And then I got a, uh, I got a yeast infection. And this was my body just saying like, I don't want to have sex with you. And this is really important because like Gina said, like if you're getting UTIs, if you're getting yeast infections, if you have vaginismus, if you, if you're not getting wet, there's something to look at. Our pussies know our pussies are so wise and they're always talking to us. So this is so important to look at it and actually explore like, what is my pussy trying to tell me? And in your self-pleasure exploration or listening to podcasts or working with a sex coach, like this is what you get to reveal and heal. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. How do you recommend getting in the mood or starting off self pleasure session if you're not feeling it but want to do it? I'm going to take this as your sex coach. <laughs> <laughs> yes, claiming um, it. But I actually have this today. So Vincent and I have been going through the motherfucking mill, as you might have seen from social media. I've been posting about it. We've been in all kinds of trigger fests this week. And um, yeah, like yesterday, we were taking a day apart from each other and the day before we were taking the day apart from each other. And then last night, Vincent started to feel loath better and was just like, I want to have sex with you. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God, how offend I was, it took me every bit of everything to not be like, you motherfucker, what? You've not, we've not spoken for two days. We've not been in connection. And now you want to have sex with me the second we meet. Um, but I was like, oh, hold on he's feeling better he wants that cool I don't want that right now I'm gonna honor my own boundaries and then this morning I was like do I want to have sex I do want to have sex but I don't want to have sex I was feeling like not repulsed but neutral to having sex with him which normally is not the case and so I did some journaling and I was like what's really going on for me and got like a bit clearer of what's going on and then I just I was like, okay, this is how I feel right now. Turned off, like not sexy, flat, whatever it was, and not making that wrong, like not shaming myself. And then on the (laughs) other side of the page, I was like, how do I want to feel? And I was like, I want to feel turned on. I want to feel bouncy. I want to feel hot. I want to feel sassy. I want to feel like fun, playful, da da da. And I was like, okay, so I get to choose my reality. And like, what would take me one step closer to that? And so for me, I I was like, I'm gonna do a little visualization. So I was just visualizing like myself, just like touching myself. And I was like, how would it feel for this? Would would that feel good? Or how would it feel 
you know, this, like if I was to use my wand or how would it feel if I was just to like massage my breasts or whatever it is. And I was like, okay, well, okay. I can feel a little something, something going on. And also it, you, I might not, and that's fine as well. So it's like not shaming it, but just like, can, and for me, it's like, we have sexual energy in our body all the time. And sometimes we're not connected to it. So it's like, oh, hey, sexual energy, are you there? Do you have anything you want to say to me? And it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm fucked off. And it's like, okay, I see you fucked off. Having like a conversation with my sexual energy right there. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so then Vincent and I actually went into a practice that we've learned from our couples coaching, which I'm just going to share because it's absolutely brilliant for us. So we've been in this kind of messy space and the the practices the Vince we we take turn we put a song on each of our choice and we take turns to act out how we've been feeling that week and the other person just copies it so we're on the bed we're naked <laughs> and we weren't in an is that the bonus I don't think that's the assignment you don't have to do it now. you're not supposed <laughs> that's to that's just naked. you guys yeah, that was, yeah okay that's good nice. Gina and Vincent edition. And Vincent went first. And it's it's really good because Vincent doesn't always express everything. But many men. Yeah, yeah like many a lot men. of men. And that's a really masculine trait to not be really expressive as well and be very, like, solid. And he acted out like, Gah! it's like, Gah! and all the frustration and stress and annoyance and then um, like falling back in love with me and pain and this and that. And then we swapped and I did it as well. And he got to feel how motherfucking frustrating I've been, frustrated I've been this week. Mm-hmm. And also in love and also like wanting and then like, oh, don't touch me. And then wanting to open up to that. And that really brought us into connection with ourselves and together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so just Beautiful. wanted to throw that on that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thanks. And I, I would just add to, I love that you both did that. And I would just add to the, when you're not feeling it, just relating to it as a practice. It's like, you don't always want to go to the gym, but when you get there and you just go through the motions, you feel really good. And then you leave feeling amazing. It's the same thing with a self-pleasure practice. So even if it's just like caressing your body or like touching your breasts or touching your pussy, even if it's not to get you anywhere, it might feel numb. It might not feel like a ton of pleasure, but just doing that and doing that multiple days, like you're going to be feeling more, you're going to become more sensitive. So even if you don't feel like you're in the mood, just set a five minute timer and just caress your body and just see what wants to arise. And just be like, we always say it's all welcome, yeah. as we say in the course, mm-hmm. like be with whatever's there. Yeah. If you feel fucked off, then be fucked off in your pleasure practice. If you feel sad, put on a sad song and be with that. Like mm-hmm. be with whatever's there and let it move. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do any of you experience things when you orgasmic states, such as color visions? <gasps> Ooh. Oh, um, oh yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm like, Definitely, Ani. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, I feel like sexuality and sex and, and orgasmic states and um, um, and being in those waves like opens up channels to other realms. Yeah. So definitely, this is something that I yeah um, I see things um, uh, yeah like temples or like even like meadows or yeah and, and you yeah, get transported like, to the places. Yes. Itself. Yeah, so it's open like that, like open yourself to that and then like let it unfold and just like be like in the surrender phase of like, wow, hey, and maybe you see like a little spot like, oh, what is that? And then going into that. Angela says, Gina, how did you self heal your UTIs? It got basically so bad that I was on a flight home from Singapore doing a visa run and I was like pretty much screaming on the plane because it was so painful. And I just got home to Bali, got in bed, and I was just like, this is the last time. This is it. This has been 10 years. This is the last time. And I literally went on like a solo pilgrimage. <laughs> I, start, I juice fasted. I was like, I know that I have the answers inside of me, and I'm not going to stop until I find it. Mm-hmm. So I went on a mad juice fast, cancelled all my plans, all my work, took my journal, went and sat in different spas in Bali. And I was just like, right, 
what is inside of this. And I just started, when I created that space, I started to get the downloads. And I'd heard that UTIs and all these things in the pussy are to do with resentment to the masculine. And I was like, okay, well, where are I resenting the masculine? And all these downloads came like um, around my dad. And if I even realized that I felt abandoned when my dad died, which he didn't really want to die, but I was like, he just, he just left me. And I felt resentment about being abandoned as a kid. And I felt resentment against different men who'd let me down and lied to me. And I just went through it all. I went through my entire sexual history from every guy that I'd had anything to do with and just kind of journaled on it to see what was there and how I felt about it. I did like cord cuttings, which you all know about in the course. I was just releasing, like clearing out my inner world. And I just had all these downloads and I went home after about three days, I went home and I had my first internal orgasm that day. Like it, and also I was, I was owed some inheritance from my dad's business. My dad had been dead for a few years, like five years or something. And, um, yeah, long story short, I was owed some inheritance and I'd been trying to get it from this kind of fund that it was in, like a, I can't remember what it's called, but I've been talking to the solicitor, talking to the accountant, so every like month, periodically over like four years. And that day it landed in my bank account. And I was just like, that is so weird. And I was just like, obviously I wasn't meant to have that money unless I'd released this resentment towards my dad because it was my dad's money. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, holy moly, this shit is really cosmic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I literally never had one after that. And also my mum used to get them at the exact same time. My mum started getting them and we'd have them at the same time. And in me doing this healing, I was like, mum, mum. And I wrote this whole letter to my dad, kind of similar to what's in the course about writing letters to people. I wrote this whole letter, I cried my eyes out. I'd never done that practice before. And I asked my mum to do it as well. And uh, she resisted it like crazy. She was like, yeah, I've done it. I was like, have you really done it though? Do it some more, like have another go. She's like, I haven't finished it. I was like, do it, do it, do it. And she didn't get them after that either. Like I healed it for both of us. It was a joint burden. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. No one has mentioned watching porn. Is this not recommended? Good mm-hmm. one. I want to finish it. Who? I think Kimmy should take this one. Right? You've been very quiet. Oh, <laughs> I don't really watch porn. I don't either, but I have a I have a thing to say about it. Do you want to? I mean, I'm happy to have you answer it. If you don't really have anything, to maybe you'll add to mine. This is what how I've related to it. Um, that if you're dependent on porn, if you're dependent on anything for your sexual arousal, that's something to look at. Right, like anything that we have that if we're like fixated on or dependent on something, it's great to examine that and look at like why am I dependent on it or why do I need that thing and can I expand to to um, you know generating my turn on without it. Um, So what I like to say is that porn is a great tool and it's great to have as like a dessert or a side dish, but it shouldn't be the main course. And so it's nothing to feel ashamed about. Like it's a beautiful tool. It's a great thing to add to arousal. Um, But just noticing if there's some sort of like absolute need or attachment or fixation to it, then it might be something good to examine or explore your relationship to it. And if you can find arousal points without it and to just integrate it, you know, as a side dish or a dessert (laughs) instead of it being the whole meal. I love that. Sometimes living in this house is like living in the porno though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's other ways to become aroused. <laughs> yeah, just get in the pool with your pals. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I feel like another important piece with porn, because sometimes I like to watch porn and, and definitely I relate to it as like a dessert or something. Uh, just like a fun thing sometimes. And I think it's also important to relate to porn as like not real. Like I feel yeah. like it's like yeah. WWE wrestling. Like, you know, they're not, re- it's not like a, the thing where it's like a play. They're not yeah. actually yeah. wrestling, right? And it's the same thing. It's like, they're not actually like most times having pleasurable sex and the woman's probably kind of faking it. And so it's like, don't, I would say like, if you go down that road, like don't try to compare yourself to the woman or like try and sound like that. Like it's just like a performance. And if that turns you on, then that's awesome. But yeah, what you said about it. Yeah. And then also like, find if that's like 
find more ways of like getting inspired into your sexuality as well like mm -hmm. you know like with friends or like or getting into your own self-pleasure practice and feeling that that's like it's an example which is not real so don't take that as do you think but like see different things like oh what's possible we're slowing down that what's tantric rituals how do we do that how mm -hmm. do we breathe energetic orgasms really oh my god okay yeah. that's all possible and it's all in the realm so Mm, yeah, yes. I do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's also just a side thing about what's the porn what, that we watched? Oh, Erica Lust. Erica yeah. Lust, of course, this is another day in the life. We watched some porn together. We're like, let's see how this alternative porn really is. Mm -hmm. And it was pretty, it was okay. It's but average. It's, it's average, average, but it is <laughs> it's better. It's terrific, actually. Well, well. We watched one. It was kind of fun. It's the old people. Yeah, it was yeah. like a 75-year-old couple, like, beautiful. beautiful. It was actually it really was interesting to watch. I wouldn't say it didn't turn out. It was great. But it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Yeah. No, but the one thing about them is that you they're actual people having actual sex and, like, actual couples. Yeah. So that's what some I like. Them. Some of that, some of it. Yeah. But that's what I like. Some of it was just like, yeah, they're just meeting and it kind of was still performative, but there were a lot of couples and you can choose and like actually mm -hmm. watch couples having sex, which is nice because it's like their actual sex life. So there are different options for porn as well. And who's the couple that Julia loves? Uh, Leo and Lulu. Leo and Lulu are a porn star. I don't, I don't personally watch porn, but Lilo and Leo and Lulu are a couple who are porn stars and they're like an actual couple and have insane sex and chemistry. So our friend Julia loves them because they actually have like the love and the connection and the sexual pleasure. So just mm -hmm. find porn that really aligns with you and feels like the most natural um, fit for you. Mm -hmm. So we are coming to a close. And yeah, thanks for coming and let us know how your ex sex explorations go. Yes. And on a scale of one to ten, ten. how thin are you right now? Ten. 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 Yes, <laughs> right on the edge of climax. <laughs> oh, we're edging. We're edging. We're edging. We're edging. We're edging. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye bye. Bye. Bye-bye.